So we're discussing features at risk. Oh, next slide. <clears throat> so um, just an overview at four parts here. Uh, I think it makes sense to we're, we're going to look at a list of the things that are marked features at risk in the spec. There's about um, about twelve uh, issues, I think. Um, but I also wanted to give some background. Well, first I want to go through the options so it's clear what we're going to do at the end. At the end, we want to be able to take some actions. And those are basically, if there are no implementations and no developer interest, remove the feature at risk. Sorry, uh, next slide. That's the first item. If there are no implementations and no developer interest, remove the feature at risk. If there are no implementations, but developer interest, uh, we can leave the feature in the spec if the implementation is imminent. Um, or sooner. Uh, move the feature at risk in the spec. Uh, if there is at least one implementation, leave the feature at risk in the spec if another implementation is imminent. Or move the feature at risk to an extension specification. Um, but so before we go on triage the list, I want to go to cover some of the spec app analysis we did um, in order to arrive at the the list of twelve items that we have. Just in excuse me, just in case um, we miss something in the process, it's better to have all eyes on it. Uh, so this is a list of things we looked at uh, in no particular order, and also includes things that are not features at risk. So the legend here is that um, uh, in the yellow column on the right, the two plus column, uh, only features marked with a red X in the two plus column are miss are both missing two implementations and have no near-term commitments. And that those are also marked in red. Uh, so you'll see, and a red X is not implemented, green is implemented, and the working arm means someone's working on it, a RIP or as an actual developer <coughs> assigned to work on it in the near term being this year. Um, so for example, the first line is rollback, uh, which currently only has one implementation. But I believe we have commitments from from and edge. Yes, I'm there I could one. Yes. So that we mark as uh, as commitment. So that's good. And then we can go down. Maybe I'll just go quickly through this list in case and someone yell out if they see a problem. Uh, for ice transport and DTLS transport. Uh, it looks like both Chrome and Edge are implementing it. There might be occasional members missing, and this might be my fault as a from a Firefox perspective. I didn't dive into the individual members so much, um, but uh, if someone has concerns there, please uh, point that out. For RTCP transport, um, it, we're really just talking about PC.SATP, which isn't really a transport. It's more of a it's like a detail. Uh, the DTMF object a little bit. It's just a subcategory of uh, everything related to SATP uh, because that object itself has links to DTMS transport and stuff. So we in Firefox think that uh, we can uh, add that. And that would, um, we think it's low hanging fruit basically because, and we haven't implemented it yet because uh, mostly what people would use that for probably, it, at least web platform tests use this because it's the quickest way to get to the DTLS transfer lab, right? So we would fix a lot of, <coughs> we would pass a lot of web platform tests if we just implemented that. But it doesn't make sense to do that until we implement uh, DTLS transport and vice transport. Um, <coughs> set parameters to implementation, same problem there that there's no breakdown of the individual members. <coughs> so, <coughs> but we're fairly confident that uh, as a whole, anyway, that set parameters makes sense. Uh, if we want to deprecate individual features there, we haven't uh, dove in there uh, in full detail. Uh, with activity detection is at risk. Um, what uh, we got was implemented in one browser, but what does it do actually? Is that just uh, Henry? You got a discussion yeah. on that one, one point. Was it just CN and? Negotiate CN? 
or am I confused on that? Yeah. I, I, give me a minute. You can continue. I, okay. I, can, I can come back to that. Yeah. So I'll skip the ones that are green. Uh, Co-op credential right. um, is at risk. Okay. There might be, Firefox mm -hmm. might do that. Um, is that what the on is for? Why did I put that in? Um, yeah, would you still do it if no one else is doing it? Because we have someone say they wanted, they were going to do it in Firefox. Wasn't... I forget why that symbol is okay. there. That might be a mistake. <laughs> um, that might be old before we marked it. Um, so yeah, that's uh, yeah. Ignore that harm. <laughs> Sorry. Um, RDC Vmux policy negotiated values at risk. Get supportive algorithm at risk. Oh, um, so, so to go back to voice yeah. activity detection, it's it's shipped in Chrome uh, to mean remove all CN codecs from the SDP. Right. We have uh, set codec references. Right. So we can accomplish the same thing. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, PR answer, I believe, has two implementations. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure we can say it to different implementations. Yeah. Okay. It's kind of there. It's uh, like we're, we're exposing it, but uh, Safari is not right. doing a lot of things that okay. are different. So I don't know what Firefox is planning to do there. That would be interesting to to know. So we should discuss it at the future. Okay. Uh, I think we would like to add it in the sense of. <clears throat> Vision, it just hasn't been a priority. Um, so I, I thought the situation it was okay, but you know, if there, maybe we could we could try to to do that. Um, QoS, um, there's in the two places that we have priority, which is um, data channels and set parameters, is at risk. Uh, no implementations. Uh, peer connections on ice candidate error. That was checked into Chrome, right? Yes. And so this this is old, then. So we have um, so this one or two. It's in there right. as well. So and and it's the same. That one is made progress. Yeah. It's shipped. Yeah. Okay. It's what? Sorry. It's shipped. Yeah. So one green X and one R, or two green Xs? <laughs> two green Xs, actually. Okay. Good. It's rough. Uh, was it? Uh, the new edge of the old edge. Right. Uh, I mean, that's it was the in the right. old edge as well. So, okay. And we can, and we can test it in some ways. Uh, I think so. Okay. Well, if we can, if we if we keep it, we need, we need to test it. So, so going forward, uh, this would only count as one implementation unless we have the old edge. Yeah. <laughs> in most cases, yes. I mean, in cases where you have maybe an underlying different. Maybe that's for us yeah. Yeah. implementation. But it, it, really, it really depends on each each feature because each, each one is really can be implemented differently in Safari. <laughs> and we can think that we have sufficient differences. There are some cases in RTC in Git function where it is the case, but uh, not in every feature. Right. Next one, uh, RTC error, uh, RTC error event. Uh, I wrote down that Chrome has a constructor for it, but doesn't otherwise uh, fire events. Oh, it never gets fired? No. Okay. No, it was just the groundwork to, to <laughs> allow using it, but it's not used. Right. How and, high is that view? Uh, I think it would be more time consuming than, than you would think. A lot of the plumbing is based on a lot in several of the APIs. Because they yeah, they are using the C plus plus RTC error method. That we yeah. do we need to add the plumbing and a lot of other things that currently determine determine boolean. Yeah. And uh, we need to extend the RTC error with a specific extended information. Mm -hmm. So yes, it's not that simple. But it's it's probably it not. No, okay, it's a lot of places. So uh, what I'm trying to figure out, so I, mean, I don't think we can mark RTC error at risk because it's okay. a pretty fundamental component. But how confident are we that 
this will not blow back in our face when this gets actually implemented. It's pretty fundamental that we need in the sense that we need an error mechanism, and we came up with that one, and we cannot remove the error mechanism. So well, it's pretty well, extensible, so it'll probably be useful for something. <laughs> well, it's, 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 it's useful, but we've, uh, we've survived so far by throwing other exceptions. I think it's, right. it's one of those. It's big because it's sprinkled all over the place, but it's, it's not big in terms of yeah. like, yeah. compatibility. Yeah. Like, what about yeah. compatibility? Yeah. Well, nobody yeah. implements it, so there's no compatibility. Yeah. Yeah. So oh. each, each particular instance no. of usage is not big, but getting all the, all the instances and all the usages is. Yeah, I mean, basically, I don't think it's going to have a backward compatibility problem because it's basically extending error, right? right. Yeah, it's, it's so it's just more info. You might not look for it, but it just gives you more detail on whatever you happen to implement it with. So it's not like anything you do should have already probably thrown an error well, before. Yeah. Except if you check, and I don't recall the exact details about this error, but if you check the name currently, yeah. I suppose you get something very different right now than what you would expect. And there may not be an interoperability on this request. So implementing it might actually work pretty easy. That's what I mean. Yeah, so from a 93% of all uh, error handlers are, are not the error and go on. Right. right. So there might, hopefully there might be a wiggle room here if we're not perfectly interoperable in our errors because it's their errors. I mean, right. I, I was kind of opposed to this level of detail of API and errors. To begin with, so and I mean, if we don't implement this, we still have to fail in these situations. Yeah. So we have to return something, and um, currently we mainly return a uh, currently return operation error because right. Yeah, I mean, if we if we are all returning the same errors, then we should basically uh, specify what is implemented. If, yeah. if it's if it's not the case, then uh, yeah, I mean. Um, yeah. Um, in, in a lot of these cases, uh, do we really need RTCR? Well, we, we ended up specifying it because of all of, because the existing error structure didn't tell people enough about what had gone wrong. Yes. Yeah, so uh, and in particular, detail. there's reasons why certain of the fields are there, like uh, STP line numbers and junk like that, was to give people much more specific information on what blew up. Not necessarily people, though, right? Because right, right, or programs, let's right. say. Because if it's just people, then right. you people the message. Through. The users don't care. It's not helpful as to be line number X, right? <laughs> well, you know, they do care for debugging and stuff. Right. But, uh, and and, you, and uh, you, you need a new FTC error for that. There's no way we can be with it in different ways. Right. So, so I don't think we're saving any time basically by removing FTC error. Because then we have more work to remove it from the spec. Right. Well, uh, you know, the spec work is. Um, magnitude of order less work than yeah. it's, 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 also fine. it's also fine to say, okay, um, we will do it later on. Yeah, well, but ripping it up, out and just saying we want us to throw oper operation error everywhere, like, yeah, we have less specificity, so it's less useful, but it would be like we would be done. We wouldn't have to update our implementations. Um, <laughs> I'm sure it's more complicated than that. Uh, but like if, if it's only for debugging, you, you have a message that you can pass. Right. And uh, probably that's what people are doing actually currently. So it's debuggable. Like uh, the okay. SDP line number, probably it's given there. Yeah. I haven't checked it. Yeah. I mean, the, um, the actual failure rates with real applications are actually astoundingly high. And uh, it's, it's uh, you know, if you're trying to build an operational service, having this kind of data is actually extremely helpful. I, I agree that the. I mean, at, you know, at the level of, level of I don't think we'll ever get to the level of perfection where every browser will throw exactly the same information on the same error. But do we really have? Is that? Well, the, is I, that I, I don't know that necessarily is a type of interrupt risk. The risk is again the developer trying to catch some of this error and right. determining the path to follow based on the name of the error or some mm -hmm. other like the name of the interface and or anything else. And that is a real interrupt. Mm -hmm. like when you change the name of the, the error, you actually break the code. And if one browser uses one name and another uses another one, then it won't work the same across browsers. 
which is why if we ship this, we will probably break applications in part of the tech waves because they don't yeah. only it would only happen when something goes wrong. With so uh, so. I do think that we <laughs> already need to look at this more clearly. I mean, initially yeah. I thought we could maybe just ignore it. But, um, yeah, so I mean, it's so almost something that you almost something that you want to do a trial on to <laughs> see like what is. Everyone, people were asking for it, and then the amusing thing is, okay, you asked for it, now you have it. What did you do, man? Remind me what when you want those to have you? <laughs> Yesterday. <laughs> so the plan was that out of this meeting we ship a final CR. Um, oh. hmm. So I, I think we need at least a discussion. Right? I don't think we should have it now because I don't think the discussion is so much about feature at risk versus you know rethinking one more time or error mechanism. But I think some of the time we have tomorrow will have to be used for other discussion. Yeah. I think I think this should spend should uh, go on and look at more space. Risk it risk it stuff. So, uh, and also RTC error event, uh, I guess is. We already, most people hopefully implement on error on their channel. They're just sending something else, I guess. Or, no? <laughs> All right, uh, next slide. slide. Yeah, okay, we're there. Uh, Simon Customer Stats, I think, um, covered. Uh, we have a good plan on the spec there, I think. Oh, yeah, the, the spec is, is, is ready for that, uh, without the implementation. So, yeah. <laughs> It says yeah. we have commitments from Edge and Firefox to, to, uh, to work on that. Um, yeah, whether it'll all be done by March is another story. But, but, but that's really more in the more. Uh, it's not a that's a stats PR issue, not a Weber to CPC. Well, for, for the uh, mandatory stats. Oh, for the mandatory stats. Um, yeah. There are many mandatory stats. And you really want to make simulcast stats mandatory in Weber CPC? Um, well, but you need to solve simulcast. Does yeah. it have to work with simulcast? If sim simulcast is part of the uh, one little, then yeah. Yeah. simulcast yeah. stats yeah. be part of one little. That might be the right. That can be discussed. Yeah. But as long as the stat structure is correct. Um, so the, the, the right the now, if you use simulcast, you get a single outbound RTP or I guess track right. object, and it, I don't know. It's it's so usually it's like a sum of all the simulcast. Like, like, it's it's like you have ninety FPS instead of. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I would have to be the case when uh, someone cast away stats. Yeah, if we have someone cast away stats, everything will just work. Right. No, I'm not saying that. Is yeah. the current behavior going to remain the same or not? No. You, no. Won't, you will no longer get this accurate mm. stats, right? No, you would, you would get three different objects. So that's a breaking yeah. change, right? Well, not well, a breaking change in the sense that how many people are using it? Right. I mean, how many? Um, yeah, I don't, think there, I don't think it's. No, I don't mean breaking change in the sense that people will scream at us. <laughs> I mean, in the sense that something worked one way one day and we got different. In that sense, it's a great change. And in that sense, it's, I mean, it's traditionally what we've been doing in stats. How many versions of everything have we had from a stats perspective? Right, but in this case, this is exposed. Like the structure of stats are actually exposed fairly deep in a lot of species. So. Um. Next is uh, sending a blob to data channel, uh, yeah. which only Firefox does at the moment. Yeah. So far. So far, so far, does it? No. Yes. 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 It's Sorry, dead. you removed the wrong line. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's good. That's less. <laughs> no, 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 mind you. Okay. Okay. I just uh, removed that I comment. I just deleted the row. And so, you know, can you get back on the prediction one? Sorry. And so, yeah, we can then skip over. 
And yeah, we just we can change the comment to say decided to remove. Yeah. So. <clears throat> Um, center set strings um, is in Chrome, I understand. Uh, yeah. And uh, we, we can do that support as well. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. We can do it as well. That's good. And this is not the role of the main. Um, if your connection ISA, then you are all member. Hmm. I'll put it in Safari. Forget why this was. She wants to go. Yeah, we just forgot it. Okay. Yeah, it's just one of those. It's already there. It's just not solid. Or is this something? Yeah. It like a small thing. Yeah, it's useful too. Should be done. So, we have to make things from. Yeah, probably in Henrik, we can probably talk to uh, to Maxim. Uh -huh. He probably would want to do this, I suspect. All right. That's good. Okay. For Edge? Yeah. Boom. Edge Chrome? Yeah, Edge Chrome. Chrome too. Um, you don't know how. Um, well, you know, uh, by end of, yes, but I don't yes. know if we can do by end of year. Um, so, the other browsers can take that one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, it's tiny, man. Uh, what? Is that like it? Is. Okay. All right, next one is identity. And it's currently. The background here is and it's not called you know, Juga. Here's that. Uh, the, the compromise was reached that uh, that uh, it, uh, identity was separated out into a separate spec, but it's still normatively referenced from uh, WebRTC PC. So it means there's still a couple of lines of language in WebRTC PC that talks about identity, um, but there's only one implementation of identity. So, so, it, so it was brought up that perhaps it should be uh, discussed here mm -hmm. uh, whether that is okay to separate, you know, have a separate spec that's normally to be referenced in this way. Well, I think the, one of the specific issue raised to market to market this steps at first, I think you always have to. Yeah, I think it should uh, it should be marked at risk and we should discuss in the 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. so so, uh, since this one may be a bit longer, maybe we can do the last one before that and get okay. back to identity. Right. Um, both both I servers and implementation, so that's it. <laughs> and set code references is okay, so yeah. Um, then next slide. Uh, there's also 28, it looks like there's 28 mandatory stats that show up in the platform test is not implemented, but we believe this is mostly a result of stats members having moved in the stack recently. So that, that doesn't mean they have no, no implementations. Uh, there are implementations that is not where they should be in the spec. So as a proof of concept, they, they work, and I think that's good enough for in a month, uh, well. Yeah, it's for you know multiple implementations. So for, for instance, for stats, it's really where uh, Firefox and Chrome are uh, to something like this. So, so oh, what does this mean? So the uh, WPT tests need to be updated. Or the, or no, the, the WPT tests are correct. It's oh, just right. that I believe, I um, but implementations haven't. Uh, Moved all the members the way the spec says, right. uh, and I think yeah, I can. Once we have yeah, more, we can talk about stats more tomorrow. I hope. Okay. Um, <laughs> no, <laughs> just the twenty. Uh, you know, hopefully, uh, 
that we have some work that we could do to, um, you know, I don't think these stats should be in jeopardy because they moved. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's, I, I well, it doesn't make sense to. But, but the PR will, will still be, uh, Right, so we get to do the work to move. Um, the fire, Firefox is behind here because we don't really have track stats. So, you know, they're not called track stats anymore, but uh, the equivalent stats for track stats um, would be some uh, work on our part to add. So I'm trying to get some data features up because the sense of tests are right, which I guess means uh, WebRTC spec is right, and it has caught up with uh, WebRTC stats changes. So this, um, yes, yeah, so the test is right because this is a, a test I've added. It basically goes through the list, the mandatory list that specified in WebRTC PC by name. And tries to find them. So I guess but, but that list is up to date compared to the two years in stats. Is uh, my question. I have to double check that. I had it a couple of months ago. Uh, <laughs> it's not correct anymore. I just modified this slide. If you may go back and forth or something to notice the slide. That's actually a good point. It may have changed even since then. No, it's a, so we should review. Um, yes, just a time management issue. Um, do we want to move back the developer session to 4:45 so we can have another half hour on this? Mm -hmm. Uh, I'll just change the invite and hopefully people will get it and I'll know that we'll start 15 minutes late. But, uh, that might be very <laughs> developer friendly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, think we should, I think we should start that external session on time. Yeah. I think okay. so. All right. We can go back Let's to this. So, okay, so we may have to schedule time tomorrow. Okay. I, I think we can um, resolve this, the stats. Uh, Maybe stats discussion, maybe. Yeah. Maybe we should move on to the list uh, of is, the... Is, isn't the answer obvious? But, uh, they, are in, they are implemented in which yeah. is just the, the ones the that are not bold phase anymore are already implemented, unless I made a mistake. But so And, and all the ones called ID are yeah. easy to implement or will go away depending on right. the stats discussion. So it's not a lot of stuff there. Sure. When you say depending on the stat discussion, you are saying that by tomorrow night, so WebRTC yeah. PC editors will know exactly what changes need to be made to WebRTC PC so that we have the right list in there. Yeah. All right, next slide. This is the same. I went through this already. I'm going to skip it. Um, so here's the list. Um, issue one OAuth value of RTC nice credential type. Um, I would vote to move this to an extension spec. Me too. Yeah. As well as number two. Me too. Well, yeah, I'll have to read a lot of this. Can we put it on the slide? Yeah. Um, just say <laughs> extension. Yeah. Uh, uh, number two. So we remove them from the main spec and ask an editor to volunteer. Yeah. That I think so. Yeah. Number two is uh, follow suit, I guess. He's up to the dictionary. Right. Um, issue three, non multiplexed uh, RTP, RTCP, negotiate value for RTCP transport. So, can we have uh, a choice between extension and remove? No, that's good. So, the current uh, implementation of RTCP transport is return mode, for sure. Or issue one and two, we are saying extension, but we could also say. No, I'm not talking about issue three now. No, but you and I are talking about one and two. Yeah. yeah. The thing is, if, if anyone is going to implement this. So, should we force to have an extension or just remove it inside? So, an extension means we take it out of the main spec and ask for someone to write it up in a new. Oh, and we ask somebody. Okay, okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay. Ask someone to. Ask anyone volunteering. <laughs> and if no one volunteers, it's, it's just that nothing happens until we have a volunteer. Okay, that's fine. And that means the enum will uh, throw <laughs> until the yeah, implementation is there. Yeah, yeah. Issue three the negotiated value of uh, UCP transport. Yeah, so the UCP transport is currently a term no. As you mentioned, issue numbers uh, match those in the, in the spec if people want to follow up. Right. More info there.
So what are options? I think extensions make is an option, Chris. This could be a one dot one thing, I guess. No, but, no, but I mean, uh, the re it, it used to be implemented, but right. we nuked it because uh, it was uh, because it had no benefit and less of it. That's one. That's one more. Three. 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 Okay. So, the idea of the goal is to remove it. We are not even talking about marking that phrase, right? You no. just remove yeah, it. Yeah, we yeah, let's admit that it's in the rules from the golden level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's say activity. Uh, oh, it should be removed. So, uh, or, uh, do we have? I think it should be removed, but it can only be removed uh, unless we want to use this particular if if people should set correct preferences. Right. But that's right. assuming they do, you don't need this. If I understand the expression. Yeah. I think we can do this Good base. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. So issue five, get default ice servers. Yeah, uh, extensions make. Extensions make. I, mean, I think that there were some good discussions on alternative proposals, but not this one. But there's a proponent of our proponents, so we will probably buy an extension stack. With the current language? Or, well, I am not a proponent. Okay. okay. They are proponents. The, bonus, the, <laughs> the, the question is about the language. Where we can swear. I mean, that should use extra okay. extension. Uh, priority. This is pretty much the general priority. And okay, so we should well, tie all of them together. Yes. Yeah, let's skip this one uh, for now. Issue seven. I right. think we should remove it. Yeah. And which one? Get supported algorithms. Yeah. Get supported yeah. algorithms. Yeah. Oh. Issue eight. Uh, also priority. Yeah, seven parameters priority. And the one we had in the tent to. No, we don't have any. I don't think we have any intent, but um, there's no intent on my end or you know, request from anyone to actually implement it. So I don't think we should be too desperate. Okay. Yeah. Well, sometimes it just should be that isn't that part of the whole process? Yes. Just a bit. The receive parameter Jane coding give you? Um, they give you the reads. Basically, yeah. if you're receiving summer cast, yeah, you, you, really you don't really receive summer cast, so probably it should be removed. Yeah, that's kind of important. Just use my best. Uh, 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 Coding parameters of PTS. Oh boy. Um, I don't think there's. Is anybody ever going to implement this? It was kind of esoteric to begin with. Well, no, we well, nobody implemented it. We have DTX in Chrome, but it's enabled by tweaking the STP click line. That's for open, just for Opus, or? Yes. Yeah, this is a different weird little thing. Yeah. That's all I can read. Let's go. Yeah. Um, Possibly extend, possibly extend this back if anyone wants it. Nobody wants it, right? Uh, not listed here, but there's over encoding parameters like uh, codec type and P type as well that are not listed and not implemented anywhere, I believe. Which one? Uh, P type and codec pilot type. That might, uh, that should be features of risk. P type. P type. P -time. Oh, okay. time, sorry. And the pilot type. Payloads. Ah, okay. Maybe there's a. Oh, which I have an implementation, but that one is weird yeah. because it's, it could be a stat. Or it, it's probably a stat. Uh, you can't. Well, that was one of the things that I would propose. Um, 
right? There isn't one, but there, there could be one. But in a, a, lar a larger discussion, though, uh, but maybe that's envy, but, but I think there will be a need to control which codec you send without, like what people do today is they renegotiate and, and put the codec in front, so the preferred one. But I think you should be able to do set parameters and here's the new payload type or something equivalent. It could be, could be something else. Well, right now, I just make it so I think that's separate discussion, I guess. Yes. Yeah, it's a long and I think we can it's all yeah. I think we can remove it and, and uh, like if future discussions about controlling this would be future discussions. So yeah. you're talking about the time and the um, critical type or the critical time is number one. Um, that one has no implementation and no one has been requesting it. Um, I believe. Well, people have been talking about experimenting with very varying P time. Yes, um, but not choosing it from the uh, application. So. No, but not choosing it from the application. So it could be removed, but it's related to. So removed. So I heard remove all over. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. Let's see if that solves. Yeah. Uh, mark that. And uh, so issue eleven data channel priority. Okay. <coughs> Or yeah. yeah. So that's um, and that, that's issue six, the priority typing on it. Yeah. Right. So, so there's also um to see configuration carrying. This is one it's the identity but that's for the next slide, right? So oh that's I don't this slide. Yeah. Or is that uh, for this? Okay. All right, and then so now we should go back to the uh, the, you know, two slides back or three slides back. Mm -hmm. uh, anything we missed yeah. on this list that we wanted? So any red X's? We didn't have the identity discussion. And it's just identity, I guess, that we're oh, yeah. discussing. Yeah. And I like the I like to raise another question. Completely out of Anyone interested in going out for dinner tonight? Yeah, that's yeah. Count? Yeah. Are you coming? Sign <laughs> <laughs> up. Keep, keep your address. I'm on count. One, two, three, four. I'm unsure. I'm, 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 I'm unsure six. because I don't normally just another Apple dinner. Eight? There's no Apple dinner. Yeah. So we'll let's, uh, we'll figure something out. <laughs> Uh, so do we? What do we do with the identity discussion? I'm assuming we don't start it now. Well, maybe. Okay, so maybe a short story might be to get first Mozilla's view on identity, since you're the only implementer that might shed some light. Well, I mean, I, I don't think our story has really changed. I mean, we're, we're the lone implementer of it. Uh, we'd have to see in the spec. Um, That's very really in the middle of the session. Yeah. Um, if, if there's stuff we could do to clarify, uh, you know, so, is there a way, you know, are there, is the objection that there are specific steps in the specs that lead to identity? Would that help the uh, matter? I think that no, it would just be confusing. I mean, most of it has been moved. Right. So the pieces that are left were left in for a reason. It's just that they couldn't you well, know, they you can, you can, well, you can always move it, you can always create yeah. the sentences to go to the peer yeah. identity by saying if peer identity. Yeah. yeah well, actually that. most of the from my patch anyway, uh but yeah, the, most of the identity mentions in the setting a remote description setting a session description algorithm. Uh it's actually not in the algorithm, it's actually in the description as a separate paragraph already. Even though you know it might have been clear to put it into the algorithm, it's actually still separate. So I think I think there are reasons we could move out. I think moving moving it out is as purely an editorial question. I think what we want to to decide is is this part of 
like whether we see one letter or not. And if the answer is, is, is not, um, then we we do whatever editorial quest, uh, thing is necessary to make sure this is only part of the extension spec. So, so in Safari side, we do not plan to implement for one year. We, we are interested in the field. Uh, we are not sure whether this is the solution. Because we are not sure this is a solution, or because we are thinking that it's probably not the right first step to do, but address maybe other issues first. We think it's better as a separate extension for now, so that if we discover that it's, it's, the, right decision, it's the right solution, we can put it and integrate it back very easily. And if it's not, then we are not tied to something. Okay, so, so extension spec makes. <laughs> It's already, right. but I guess yeah. it's completing the migration yeah. of one that's into the... Yeah. So completing the migration yeah. and the migration. Yeah. 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 So I guess in terms of editorial work, there is some work to avoid the monkey patching type of situation. But sure, you're going that. It might not be that simple to look it out, but I guess we can try to figure it out. Right. It's pretty interspersed with what's left is pretty interspersed. Yeah, because either you just add an if to the sentence. Yeah, adding an if would be simpler. Or or you add like but some reference if point. If you add an if in the spec, you, you need yeah. two implementation of if true and two implementation of if false. You mean like if you are a concerning identity then yeah, I think the way you would do this is you would have a hook in your algorithm saying here is mm -hmm. some time where you do some magic if you are extending this yeah. back. And, mm -hmm. Yeah, or um, so you can add extension. Yeah. Um, more I mean, separately, but I think we really um, I think we discussed this morning that identity currently is the only place where isolated media streams are defined mm -hmm. and isolated media streams are useful in other contexts than yeah. identity. Right. So, um, not it's kind of a dependency for our RTCPC, so we also need to figure out that out. Yeah. So, there's an actual there to move that somewhere. Yeah. Probably we need to capture many, even though it's not really related to camera. Or, so, so it's used uh, in other contexts? Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, recorder, uh, description of, uh, you know, how do you cross order the content. Okay, well, we can leave that for the yeah. rubber history, yeah. I guess. Because it's, it's all, it's, uh, it's all yeah, I don't know if we have anyone on here. It's not hard. I have only saw one person, I don't know if it's a tool. So, so not when you send the invites, you send with the writing? Uh, um, and by the way, so the camera which is on that tablet there is uh, basically not recording any of us. Uh, oh, just me. <laughs> just. Yeah, can we actually move it? Can, okay, can we move it like in the middle of the table? Or uh, probably. Yeah. So uh, the TV reaches the. the uh, can I have now It's not mine. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, and, uh, yeah, well, um, I guess we can run it without power for And by the way, the, uh, the HDMI is really long as a table, so that, that we can keep. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, the table. It's working like this. You can see the table. Well, yeah, yeah. We don't have the uh, sound
Okay. Uh, so are we finished with that section now? Uh, I, I, I think that was the, we don't have any more items. So, okay. Yeah. So uh, we're now going to move to the developer feedback session. So we get to use Brian? Yes. So, uh, actually, it would be useful for uh, people who are going to give feedback to introduce themselves and to hear us. Hello, uh, my name is Mihai uh, Mesarosh. Can you hear me? Uh, good afternoon. Yes. Uh, is uh, Sean and the 8 by Sylvia and the 8 by 8 team here? Otherwise, I don't see anybody else on that list. Uh, why don't we start with you then, Lars? Oh, hello. Uh, okay. Um, so, uh, good afternoon. I um, I'm uh, working for the Hungarian National Research and Education Network, and uh, I'm also working uh, in the uh, European level uh, Giant Association uh, in a Weber TC uh, work yes, group. Uh, we provide. Uh, some uh, uh, video conferencing service uh, for the higher education and research and uh, I'm working for a distributed turn service uh, for this community and uh, uh, what I uh, uh, have here so uh, we have a high bandwidth network and uh, virtual machines uh, around the globe and we want to have a global uh, turn service for our community and uh, the, the goal is to keep traffic, the media traffic inside our network. And uh, so uh, we want to create a multi-tenant turn uh, solution. And uh, as you know, it is not possible with the long-term credential. Uh, so the uh, long-term credential authentication, uh, what is the basic authentication uh, in the Turner FC? Uh, because the the uh, draft, the origin-based draft, is rejected by IATF, so uh, there is no way. And uh, and uh, I want to to argue to keep the old uh, inside the spec uh, because uh, this is the only one uh, that uh, provides a standard uh, IATF standard uh, that is suitable for the web. So the long-term credential, the username and password, is not really uh, for the uh, for the browsers. They cannot uh, keep it in secret. And uh, it sub supports the collocated turn and uh, and the collocated uh, turn service, so we could have multiple authentication databases uh, around the globe and uh, for uh, different communities, for Europe, for uh, I don't know uh, America and so on. Uh, but uh, we could uh, operate a single uh, service. So this is the goal, uh, what uh, we want to achieve. And I started. I, I'm working on the cotton. Uh, because I started to, to use Cotern uh, later, I released uh, the last uh, releases I made. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm developing Cotern and also I started to work on the Firefox side. Uh, I have a confirmation from Byron uh, to, to, to implement uh, the old uh, stuff in, in, in Firefox. I, I, I'm uh, working in the nicer uh, level and, and uh, made some, so I have some progress and I hope I will uh, finish it uh, in this year. So uh, I, I, I was uh, the one who put this arm in the uh, Firefox, so it was not uh, Yanivar mistake. Uh, sorry, it was uh, my, uh, I'm sorry about it. But uh, I, I think uh, I, it, it, it will happen in, in, in this year. And uh, I, I don't know uh, why it is uh, not uh, the other browsers, why I don't uh, want to implement this. It is not, I think, too big effort to, to uh, Put uh, these two parameters uh, in the old and and uh, and after that, in turn, uh, you need to implement two attributes. So uh, and a little change in the in the logic, um, changing the uh, MAC address, uh, replacing uh, the key, uh, 
with uh, with the uh, Mackey. But uh, I think it, it, it is uh, not too big effort, and, and I, I, I will try to uh, at least uh, implement it in Firefox and and, uh, and uh, demonstrate it with Cotern because Cotern has uh, the implementation on the server side. So everything is there, uh, I think, to, to, to uh, use this. And this is the only one uh, that supports uh, multiple turn. If someone is not... Uh, uh, not, have, not, not, not a big giant like... Uh, any of the uh, commercials, then uh, it is very hard to have a global uh, turn service. Uh, but uh, uh, we want to to, to have uh, because uh, it is a, a, the best if it is uh, distributed around the globe and to keep latency low. And uh, our community is, is traveling around the globe uh, because researchers are are, are uh, moving around, and and uh, we want to 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 have this uh, this. Uh, uh, turn service for uh, for uh, the different uh, uh, in different services that we are we are providing. So we have commercial services and and we also uh, doing some open source development, so WebRTC development for our community. Uh, and also, I want to to say that uh, we are trying to use the identity part. So the identity is also important to us. Uh, uh, we are still not. We are, we are a small group, so we our developments uh, are going very slow. But uh, uh, we want to to keep these two things uh, inside the spec if possible. And uh, I don't know if uh, why why the the what what are the others uh, using for turn authentication because the the time limited uh, uh, thing. Uh, this is an expired draft, and this is expired, and and not continued to move on to turn old, uh, as far as I understand, and uh, and uh, the 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 original long term credential is 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 not designed for the web, definitely. So I I, I think the turn old is is it should be kept uh, inside the browser. So that's all uh, in, in what I want to add. We've just discussed that because uh, of our uh, requirements from a WCC process perspective, where we want and really need to push WebRTC 1.0 to recommendation. Uh, and given the timing constraint on that, we will be uh, moving uh, the OAuth credential part of the spec to an extension spec. Um, and that doesn't mean that it will. Uh, not get implemented or that it uh, doesn't have the same status. It just means that it won't make it in the same uh, release cycle of the specification. Again, mostly based on the fact that indeed currently there hasn't been enough uh, uh, take up by implementers. Um, if we do move it out of the spec, the plan would be to have uh, what we call an extension spec to WebRTC to manage this, and if so, we will need uh, people to get involved to uh, actually make sure that this extension spec uh, is maintained, uh, also work with implementers if and when uh, they get to implement it. So, and write tests test as well, that's always a, an interesting part of our process. So since you were, if I, my memory is correct, the original uh, proposal for this feature, we will likely be reaching out to you to see if and how you can get involved in uh, the maintenance of that. So when people are trying to get into the meeting and they can't get in, is there something you need to do, Harold? No. So they should be just get in and I have to approve them. Like I just tried to join and I can't get in there. Are you is the VXF? Yeah. Is it um, so the code and uh, meeting leaders? But anyway, so the code of meeting to start the VXF is that one? Yes. So, Missy, did that make sense? Sorry. Yeah, I, I, I think I'm not happy to, to move everything uh, out from identity and now the uh, old uh, to outside because I, I think uh, it will be uh, less important and feel the implementers that it is less important. I, I don't know what is the, 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 the way uh, actually the turn authentication happens. 
uh, in uh, Weber TC. So, what do you think? What 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 is the uh, right way? How uh, uh, an implementer should authenticate? Uh, because uh, for me, I'm I, I'm pretty sure that everybody is using this uh, expired draft or according this time limited credentials somehow, and 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 uh, and I'm I'm not feeling that. Uh, it is uh, it, it is a standard, so it is uh, um, it is the uh, way uh, what uh, we should keep in, inside. And the long-term credential is, is definitely not uh, what what we want to in implement, I guess. So uh, using static uh, username and password authentication for a turn because uh, we will uh, then uh, provide uh, open relays, uh, and I think it's not. The way. But uh, yeah, I, I can leave it this. So, so, uh, so, so I'm, I'm, I'm okay to move it out, and I, I can try to involve in this uh, specification and, and the tests. Okay, um, so I'll reach out to you, Missy, to figure out, among other things, the logistical aspects. Uh, UN from Apple had a question, I think. Yeah, you, you're men mentioning that long-term credential, like the, the current API is not great, but can you can you use it and have short-term credentials and as a kind of a hack? Are you planning to do that? So what is your plan? What is your current plan with your current services? Actually, we use uh, and we provide all the two authentications. So we provide uh, the long-term credential, so username, password for for long term. But uh, we also providing the according the spec, uh, the REST. So we have a REST API uh, to get short-term uh, credentials, time-limited uh, credentials. Uh, but uh, I'm I'm not happy with this. The turnout will be a uh, much better way and more standard way because uh, the time limited uh, the rest is is an expired draft, so it is not a standard. And the old uh, in in many other uh, things it is better because it it also supports the multiple authentication sources. So you can have because the the REST API uh, use realms and realm uh, is only. Um, uh, limiting uh, to, to one domain and uh, if we can have multiple auto authorization servers that uh, provide tokens uh, for the service then uh, if we could solve that uh, we could have uh, authorization server for Europe and America and so on. So uh, OAT will be the much better solution for, for that. So I'm, I'm, I'm arguing to, to, to keep the turnout uh, inside the spec still. What, what is then the, the but uh, I, I want to implement all the three all the three authentication type in the service what is the non-standard uh, thing you're relying on right now just for my scribing uh, actually we use the the turned uh, draft uh, from Justin and Berkeley, behave, turn, rest. Um, that is, this is uh, we use in the service mostly. Okay. Well, how do you get to get that to run in the browser? Um, sorry, can you repeat this? I, I hear you so, very hard. So, uh, what? Uh, so, since nobody. Uh, do any of the browsers implement uh, the behave draft? Or is it something that you can, you can implement? Actually, it, uh, don't. No, no, no. No, no. No, no. Uh, yeah, you can use the same uh, from the client side, from the browser side. It is uh, not changed anything. The, this, uh, the behave turn rest. Uh, only on the server side uh, needs some changes. So. Uh, from the Cotern side, uh, we, you need to change the authentication. Uh, but uh, yes, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm using this actually uh, in, in, in the service. Uh, and uh, I, I propose to use uh, everywhere if possible. But it has the limit that uh, I, I can have only one authorization server, so one uh, real, one uh, database uh, with the credentials. I cannot uh, provide multiple authentication servers uh, for the service, for the third servers. 
And as I mentioned, I, I tried to implement uh, the old in, 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 in Firefox and I hope I will finish it in this year. So I, I want to test it and I hope uh, after that, uh, if it will have a free open source implementation, uh, maybe it uh, gets some attention. Okay, thank you. Uh, I think we have Sean now on the call and we can move back a slide to his feedback. Can you hear us, Sean? Yeah, I'm, I'm here. We, uh, yeah, there we go. Okay, cool. So um, a lot of mine come from a very use, very use case. I work on a Go implementation of WebRTC, and so these are the, some of the things that have come up. Um, increasingly, I'm seeing with the ICE transport, a lot of people are coming to me with complaints about not about knowing what kind of situations they want their ICE to work in, um, only allowing certain port ranges, whitelisting some interfaces. Someone comes to me and they explain that they're setting up some VPN solution and they have 250 interfaces, and it just causes lots of issues to have so much going on. Um, and like you can try to have a best guess on the on the ICE agent itself heuristics, but it falls down in a lot of these cases. Um, can you um, talk a little bit more about the port range uh, case? We have heard that feedback as well. Um, yeah. All of the situations. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it, it seems it's mostly like a mostly at companies where it's the de, it's detached from the developers and people managing their networks, where they put a request forward and they say, "We'll give you this certain range of." range of ports and this is all you're allowed to use. And so they're stuck in this case where they want to use WebRTC, but they have to end up choosing other things because of because of this constraint. At Chrome, we implemented a, a, con, a, a management console feature for, set, for restricting the port range. So it, uh, but it, it's only available if you're in the managed environment. Yeah, so like I got, yeah, but most of these, like, you need to support Firefox, everything else. So it'd be, it'd be perfect if it was more of a standard. These are probably enterprise users or consumers? Or? These are mostly, um, these are most, yeah. These are most. I, I would I would call them more small business. It seems at the enterprise level, people are, um, you know, they know enough that's going on that they they don't run into these issues. I see a lot of um, small companies that are trying to trying to build internal tooling and small projects. Yeah. The uh, the next one is is probably a small one. Um, a lot of people have signaling that isn't, that is somewhat naive and just sort of spews messages and they come out of order and stuff like that. And I feel that it's maybe, it feels like once a week I have someone in the Pi on Slack channel that complains about add ice candidate before a set remote description throws an exception. Um, I don't know if it's possible to just, if there's any reason why you can't cache them or throw them in a queue or something but it would save a lot of issues for people that are coming into WebRTC for the first time. Well, well there is a queue, but I don't know. Uh, but you still have to, the message set remote description has to have been called synchronously before and as candidate. I don't know that we would know the reorder of methods. But, but is there any technical Restraint. Is there any like technical reason why someone can't add an ICE candidate before a before a remote description? Yes, because yes. The, the add ICE candidate goes into that description. It belongs to that one. So yeah. you can have renegotiations going on, and so there might be candidates coming in from the previous um, renegotiation. Uh, so you might on on the signaling channel you might have uh, offer candidate 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 offer candidate candidate candidate. So if if we reorder them, you might end up in the wrong offer. But this is only for the first case. If you add candidate, add candidate, and then then you get an off, then you get a 
an offer, you can assume that these candidates that you have already goes into the first offer. And then this issue doesn't exist anymore because you already have an offer. So you'll never run into this issue again. So I don't think renegotiation applies. I don't see a difference between, you're just talking about initial negotiation, but yes. the browsers have to deal with, there's no limitation that you can only negotiate once. Um, and ICE Good. candidates come in for a long time. So if you renegotiate, and on, on the other side that's sending this stuff, usually they would just hook up JavaScript to a nice candidate and just send stuff. So there's, um, mm -hmm. but it, it's, I think what ha might be happening is that a lot of people, there's a race potential where when, when something comes in on your signaling channel, you have to call set remote description first. You should, don't wait. Uh, if, you, if you're if you waiting for anything, then you can get racist. Like if you try to get YouTube media, for example, at a time and wait on that before calling set remote description, that, that is, uh, I would say that's a pilot error and then you get racist. That is a problem with the API. I don't think that we've found any good way to solve that. Uh, yeah, I guess I, I agree that we it would be great if we didn't have these races but in the real world you have popular webrtc shims like simple peer and stuff like that that cache the ice candidates and then add them after the set remote description is called so people are already doing this but in javascript and then you have people that are trying to build their first applications and then they're hitting this case and it's souring their experience um that's that's it if caching the ICE candidates defeats the whole purpose of add ICE candidates. You can, the simple way to add cache candidates is basically to wait two seconds, and then they will be in the offer mm -hmm. that you're sending. So the whole point of this was to optimize initial negotiation mm -hmm. and, um, and that unfortunately leads to this. Uh, we also mm -hmm. have, is this on Chrome, or is this happening in Firefox as well? I do not know if it happened in Firefox. I, I only know that it's Chrome. Like it, Chrome in, in set remote description has, in uh, Add Ice Canada has like the very first assertion is that a remote description has been set. I don't have proof, but I know that the web platform tests uh, were modified presumably because there was some start only in Chrome. So hmm. all that, that might be a bug. Is, is this related to uh, you adding these early Candidates. I don't think we ever found out that that was the problem. No, no, I'm just wondering if this is related to these races or not. We clarified this back to uh, it wouldn't be okay to send candidates early. I still haven't seen a browser that sends candidates early. Okay. Um, so the next one, and I guess um, this is one of those where you can implement this in other ways. Commonly, people will ask if they'll come from using WebSockets and they'll use the closed codes and they'll ask for the equivalent for data channels, which we can't provide. Um, but at the same time, you can just your final method, your final message in the data channel can be your closed code if you want. Um, not sure if that's worth, but people ask me to bring it up. Um, the ability to deny a data channel, someone has a little VPN application that's embedded and they want to look at the name of the channel that you know fires the open and immediately close it. Again, this seems like something that you can accept it and close it quickly. Not sure that there's value here or to complicate the spec for no reason. Um, a lot of a lot of things in this I guess will fall into the next one is media via data channels is, is becoming incredibly incredibly popular. Um, I have one user that's they're they're trying to you know have like five million streams or whatever all these users and the amount of reduction in CPU costs because of the cipher choice is frustrating them a lot. Um, they're seeing like a fifty percent jump in cost and in media encryption because of that, and we can go into that down in the DTLS transport. Um, so the RTP transports uh, working with a lot of embedded. Um, customers that are doing security cameras, they want to be able to control those latency loss trade-offs. I'm hearing from some people that they would prefer 
to have packet loss or they would prefer to have, you know, a lot of keyframes, but have, you know, 400 milliseconds of latency all the time, because that's very, very important to them. And they're, and they have customers that are frustrated that when their camera latency grows or shrinks and they're confused by that. We're in the mid it's a long time in my work. They want more latency than they have. I have latency sufficient. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I think some, it's, um, I can't think, the, the one I've heard that I don't know how um, much it matters is some people have um, SFUs or media servers are saving server side and they're, they want to be able to increase the latency, but I don't think that applies here. But yeah, there's some places where they're, where someone's like doing something where the latency is as, isn't as important, like a second, two seconds, it might be okay, but they don't want the viewer to see any sort of corruption or packet loss. Um, but yeah, so on both both ends, you want people that want less latency, more loss. Some people absolutely don't want any loss. It sounds um, like uh, a proposed API that's that stuck. Never got anywhere. It's hard to, to specify. Maybe a well, just just a question. You said the media over data channel. Is any of that reliable data channel? Or is it all unreliable? Oh, um, I think I think both. I have some people that they're very concerned about head of line blocking, and they want to have really low latency. And some are basically just sending, you know, DRM like they're just sending stuff to to throw into the media source extension. So I think both. It's people just want more flexibility, is and that, that they're not able to get with the current media APIs. And so you, you mentioned that there was a fifty percent CPU increase mm -hmm. in the case compared to regular MSC. That fifty percent increase is because the um, for SRTP the only Cypher suite that's offered is AES CCM with an authentication tag of SHA-1 something. And, but DTLS, you have access to the AES GCM, which you're able to use like the hardware accelerated, um, the ANSNI or whatever it is for Neon. And um, there is a, I emailed the mailing list about this, but um, they're seeing like a 50% jump just because it's not hardware accelerated. Oh, so the reasons they're going to the data channels, they can get the acceleration there, but they couldn't get the SRTP. Uh, sorry, one more time. Uh, yeah, I'm j just trying to understand. You're saying one reason they went to the data channel is they get uh, they get hardware acceleration they couldn't get with SRTP. Exactly. Oh. Um. Yeah. So those are the those are the big ones. Is more control and then the lack of hardware acceleration. And it's very, very simple. Like it's already available. It's just not turned on. Um, and then the next uh, big one, and, and really I, I realize this already exists, is the set, set codec preferences on transceivers aren't available yet. Um, people love their, love their H.264, which I know is a contentious subject, but that's, I feel like that's the first thing people so, and I'm tired of seeing people throw out STP munging solutions. I, you know, the I, once a week I have to see someone do a for loop to get rid of random lines and it blows up in different ways and just be really nice to get, a, get away from this. Um, the DTLS transport, lack of Cypher suite choice. Um, this is really just, again, people want hardware acceleration when they know they have it and maybe the WebRTC implementation the client needs to just make better choices. But this does come later with uh, Snowflake. And then for the peer connection, people complain about this all the time, the ad stream versus ad track versus ad transceiver, users unsure which to use. And um, I don't know what the answer is there. The answer is Yannick, <laughs> or blocks of playing your whole of this. Oh, I get a remote server. Yeah. That would, that would make me happy. Um, another one is the provisional. Sure. Off <laughs> yeah. 
Oh, no, no. It was we, could, we could have said all, all you have to use and Pensy where everything else is legacy, except for the difference about whether or not you use the Pensy where that's been created and put it off to remote Docker. So, so I think the answer is use ad track unless you know what you're doing or unless you want single guess. Mm -hmm. I, I would say use ad track unless you know, if you're only adding one video and one audio. Right. Once you start more on both ends. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, the yeah. only my only concern is ad track is sort of this leaky abstraction. It's very difficult for people to understand what's actually going on with the media sections until they have the ad transceiver. Um, it causes a lot of headache for people when they're they don't understand why certain things are working. And then also, yeah, the multi track. Like it seems nice. I, I always start people off with ad transceiver just so I don't yeah. Any, any kind of professional installation that you want to yeah. control should So this is provisional yeah. offers and answers. Getting rid of those is a wish list item for me. Mostly I don't I don't really see any value in them. And on top of that, um, it's like a anecdote that comes up like every week or so that someone asks me what a PR answer is, because they'll see them in random errors or like they'll say, you know. And I'm like, I have to like go through this whole conversation and like I have to <laughs> cover it in Python. Like I just don't, it's just a thing that I'm not, I'll never use and I don't see why I have to answer questions about it. I think the answer is no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I, I wish it was as simple as that, but I have to say no all the time. So it'd be nice to have a final no. Um, I don't think it has a no. No, that's the end of it. Have we marked it that place? Or we would, uh, no, not marked it. Maybe you should. Oh, this is my personal opinion. Not my opinion. Okay. Nobody no. actually uses it. Yeah, it's, it's confusing to use it. That's, that's a good point in uh, removing it. No, let's that, maybe not have the conversation yeah. now that it's probably worth struggling for other yeah. conversations. Well, it's, it's kind of one of those things where it may actually be. From the spec or from the okay. There might be other users that are finding it. The answer is not mm -hmm. We should have this way it's used to. To this user, I would say <laughs> that you're getting people who will see the answer. Painful. If they use it, I would say the answer is no. You have to have a problem first. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if you don't know where it's useful, then it's not useful. Right. <laughs> Okay. Um, this, this is, is a. You're not, you not need to buy a mini. Uh, this is sort of a wish list item. Probably not. No one in this room really cares. Um, but it would be nice. The I guess the V1 of the WebRTC API. It never really did any multi-method dispatch off of types. So the one that frustrates me is the add transceiver. The fact that it can take a DOM string or it can take a, a track. Um, it's difficult to implement in other languages that don't have this. Um, I have a, a C implementation that models after the W3C and then the Go one that's public. I get that doesn't really affect what, this, what we're concerned about here, but it is nice for others. Um, and I think it's nice for the adoption of WebRTC because there's plenty of places that people want to use it that's not the, uh, not the browser. But again, not really relevant here, but just a nice ask. And then um, Tor Snowflake is like a is a um, censorship circumvention. Basically, they use data channels to do the onion routing, and it would be and they've spent a lot of time removing the ability to fingerprint things. So um, the ciphers that are provided by some browsers, the fact that ICE is authenticated, not encrypted, little things like that. Um, probably not a, definitely not a high priority for, for anyone, but it would be nice to make life easier for that and who knows what else that could open up. It, it, I think it, it could be valuable information. It was more precise. So that, that's a concern, uh, as a general concern. If there are privacy issues in where we should fix them. Mm -hmm. If the doors no fake people, with five bugs, 
right? Or at least document the issues they're encountering. That would be great. Yeah, so can I put that in the WebRTC NV repo? I, I created the, the issue there as well, and they, they have documented all their concerns. Or if it is a design that uh, getting access to that, that would be nice. Okay, yeah, I will update that update that GitHub issue, but um, but it seems this will probably be uh, require a lot of peer connection because they want to have control over certain attributes that most people don't care about. So I'll update that right now, and that that'll be available on the uh, the NV repo. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, that's that's it for me. Thank you very much, Sean. Thanks. Uh, we, uh, Sylvia, uh, can you hear us? Actually, uh, if you can. Yes, I can. Yes, I can. I actually uh, um, just filled in some stuff on the uh, uh, the it's slide thing that you shared. Stop and go back here. You'll see Sylvia's uh, slide there. Okay, great. Thank you. Go what ahead. About, what about um, Mr. Mr. Roth? Has he, has he already done his part? Yes. yes. Uh, okay, I apologize. I'm late. Um, I've been at work, and my feedback will not be very, um, you know, very detailed. It's, it's mostly um, compa complaining about things from my WebRTC, um, a telemedicine uh, developer focus. So we're selling a telemedicine software to healthcare professionals and to to a hospital, and. Um, we have to, you know, jump through hoops to to make some things interoperable. Uh, we're now supporting Chrome, um, Safari, and Firefox. Mostly, we um, have to recommend people not to use Firefox because the video quality is not good enough. Um, Chrome and Safari do much better with the video quality. Um, but is that, on the other is hand, that because of uh, robustness, like FEC and RTX? I couldn't tell you what it is underneath. I, I freely admit I'm now, um, you know, CEO of this company and don't actually get my get get too much into the depths. This is more of really high level high level report of some of the pains we have to go through. So, apologies if I can't tell you the reasons why some things happen. Um, so I don't know why the video quality in Firefox is so much worse. I would actually love to to use Firefox more. Um, but um, we just haven't have, have had very, very poor success with it. It's particularly, I think, when we do um, uh, screen sharing as well as video sharing. So we have, uh, we have it set up so that our screen sharing is actually showing um, just like, like this on the side of, of running the videos. Uh, it's not replacing our local video. It's, it's sharing it um, as a, as a full-blown um, piece of content, and so we're using um, the um, um, well, what's it called? Oh, we brain fried it this evening. Sorry, um, we're using the new API that that Google moved from from the legacy to the to the new, you know, where you can send multiple video streams at the same time. Um, and uh, that's working better in Chrome and not so well in, in Firefox. Anyway, um, one of the one of the key problems we're having is that that um, you know it's all about interoperability. All of my complaints will be about interoperability and lack of interoperability, and um, that may well be that APIs are missing, like the recording API is missing in Safari and iOS, um, but it's it's also about um, parts of APIs not being implemented consistently between browsers. Um, I can mention that uh, I'm also looking forward to getting more efficient implementation of video decoding. We often hit devices that can't cope with the um, high CPU requirements of video decoding, so we, we sometimes hit that problem as well. Um, but uh, one of the biggest things we, we did recently are the statistics. So when we pull statistics of the web calls and we send that into our monitoring application, uh, we, we have two APIs, two fundamentally different APIs now to support the legacy one and the new one. 
Um, and the new API is actually much more limited than the old one. There's a lot less information in there. Um, and um, they're also, while, while all the browsers are now implementing the new one, they're not implementing them consistently. So some have, uh, there are certain bits missing from, from both. So it's, it's really it's really hard when you're trying to provide a service and you have to um, support current browsers as well as old browsers and all the, the complexities of all the com combinations between all of them. Because when you get into a video call, maybe you've got four people joining from four different browsers and they all need to be working with each other. So it's, it's, a, it's an utter nightmare. I, I have a question. You, you said that uh, the, the old API has a lot more stats than the new API. As I assume you mean the Chrome's Chrome's old one versus Chrome's uh, standard implementation, right? Right. Um, have you seen? There is a document I wrote that that mapped out the differences between the the old and the new stats, and it's it's true that that there is less information but but when when i actually went through and did all the work i found surprisingly few stats that, that didn't have coverage and i'm, I'm wondering if, if you've seen that i think um, I've heard before and, and then i couldn't back it up uh, yeah i don't think i've seen that so if you could share that that would be really useful actually i, I can email it to you that'd be great awesome thank you um my co-founder also just mentioned another issue that he keeps coming across. So sometimes we set up a call and um, the API is not really telling us whether the call is successful. So we check things like the current time on the video element to check wh whether the video is flowing, so whether, whether the current time is changing, uh, uh, but that's inconsistent. So most of the time it works. But sometimes we get media playback through um, with the device and the current time of the element stays locked at zero. So if the element stays locked at zero, we assume that it's not playing and we reset the, co the connection. Uh, um, but actually the connection has been set up. So it, that makes it really hard to detect and resolve when there are playback issues. Um, also, you know, when, they, when people get disconnected within the call, it might happen the same, the same way. Um, and uh, the current time doesn't always get uh, get updated persistently. So we haven't found a better way of detecting when when the video has disappeared. Um, so if you've got any suggestions there as well, that would also be helpful. Finally, enough um, browsers always think that the connection is there when you know the, the video has sometimes disappeared or gone black or. Um, um, gone to gone to audio only. Um, I, I I guess yes, that's unfortunately. Yeah, and I, I know this sounds like a complaint fest, so I'm really sorry. Um, um, but I, first of all, I, I wasn't I wasn't very much prepared for this, so I apologize. But. Um, I'm just trying, what I'm trying to tell and to share is some of the pain we have to go through as developers and as, as um, application providers, which is quite possibly also one of the reasons why the biggest use case for WebRTC at the moment is the use of the data channel for delivery of video, because you don't actually have to deal with um, the complexities of having lots of browsers interact with each other on different platforms. All you do is send it to one API, so it's, it's, a, it's a lot easier. So what we originally developed WebRTC for, or one of the use cases, which is audio and video conferencing, that's actually really the hardest and most difficult use case that we have. Interoperability just goes, goes, goes um, becomes, um, uh, combinatorially more complex when you have to deal with all the different versions of the standard. And that's just, you know, that's just the way of, of the world right now. And I hope that will get better in future. Um, but, um, you know, that's what we deal with right now. And that's really all I got. So, um, sorry, this sounds like a complaint fest, but um, I thought I'd share it nevertheless. 
Well, thank you, Sylvia, and, and uh, we appreciate it even, even if it is a complaint. That's what we're I, I think. To. I think the, the complaints are, are well warranted. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, you can take all the, all the browser vendors to, to do more compatibility testing. That would be really, really awesome. I agree. Um, so, we also have Anil uh, on, on the line. Um, he's on a mobile, so uh, I'm able to fill in his slides, but he will fill them in uh, after uh, talking to us. So, Emil, are you there? Hey, folks. Yes. Again, apologies for not having put this down on the slide. I'll do that after um, after the meeting. Um, so, I only I only have three items um, to begin with. One of one of the the pain points for us right now is uh, this whole um messiness around switching plans um and really from our perspective uh we have this the, the 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 situation is so we have this huge change that needs to happen that will not bring us any value we, it doesn't solve any problem that we have today and on t so uh one thing that would be appreciated is to make sure that it is possible to do such changes such transitions gradually with as little disruptiveness as possible so there has been this entire discussion about ssrcs being manipulatable with <clears throat> um after after the switch to unified so that you don't have to go and uh, immediately have our idmid support in sfu so that you can do changes primarily on the client side uh and then gradually move to um to newer to our idea my support on the sfu as well this this has been discussed a lot so i'm not going to stay too much on it but i just wanted to uh mention it's one of the major things uh one thing that's an implementational concern um that's not really for this group but i mentioned i'm going to mention just the same we keep hearing very very often um about this problem about how um not all windows are shareable on windows uh depending on uh, specifically those that use metro ui that's a problem that you hit with chrome and soon with edge as well um so it, it's probably one of the top things that we keep hearing from customers and then finally and this is the one that i wanted to spend the most time on is as a as an sfu provider um there are multiple things that we'd like to be able to do to assist the call uh, and the call quality. And right now, we're, we're kind of limited. So take, uh, take audio quality, for example. There's really no way we could do anything to, uh, to help audio quality much. Like for, you could say that um, for video, we could add additional FEC on the SFU. Uh, but out of band uh, FEC is not is not currently supported for for audio, so it would be great if we had that option as well. And I think actually this folds into the bigger topic of we'd actually like to be able to add our own FEC um, to to peer connections uh, and those those hooks that have been discussed in the past. Uh, uh, there was a presentation a couple of years from Justin as well on on Cranky Geek. Um, that is something that we're really, really looking forward to, primarily for this quality issue, being able to assist it and adjust it on the SFU side, but also because we'd like to be able to do things like end-to-end um, -end encryption. So there's a document on GitHub from Harold uh, that describes an SFU, uh, sorry, uh, an end-to-end -end encryption scheme uh, that is actually entirely compatible with our vision as well. This is what we'd like to be able to do. The perk efforts on the ITF are not going to work for us. Um, so again, we're back into these hooks on the client side that would let us intercept um, traffic at various stages and inject our own logic in there, whether it's you know after encoding, uh, 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 before peer connection, sorry, after peer connection, so that we add our own um, assist code. Does that make sense? It makes sense to me. Sounds, sounds like like all these envy discussions we're having. Right. Yeah. That's uh, that's all I, I had for today. Thank you. 
Okay, uh, yes, if you could uh, update the uh, slides to reflect what you just said, uh, you know, that would be great. Um, are, there any other that. are there any other developers on the line who would like to give uh, feedback? I see a couple of other uh, additional folks who've been listening in. Do any of them want to speak up? Or uh, uh, give their comments on what they've heard? I see uh, Max and Sung. Do either of you want to say a few words? Yeah, hello everyone. Um, so actually, uh, a lot of important topics that are um, essential for us here at Microsoft too have been already mentioned, right? One is this uh, lack of uh, sort of granular transport configuration, specifically the port ranges, which is super crucial for um, enterprise products. Uh, this is something that we're looking forward to having part of this back too. Um, and the second one, which uh, Emil just mentioned, is uh, all the NV topics, right? How do we really um, expose the hooks uh, from different points of uh, the stack um, and, and let developers to plug in their, uh, their modules there, right? Letting them uh, improve quality, uh, reliability, and uh, so on and so forth, right? This is this is something that we're excited to see at some point becoming part of the standard, right, and part of the implementations too. Do you have any comments on the whole unified plan issue, Max? The transition? No. <laughs> Well, uh, the very same things like SSRC, right? And SSRC uh, uh, fixing, right? SSRC to be of a specific value. So, so only this. But again, these were mentioned already. But to be, be clear for everybody, you're currently on Plan B and kind of uh, stuck there, or just uh, using that. Sorry. Say say again, Bernard. Just, uh, you might want to just, you just to be clear for everyone in this room, you're currently working on Plan B, and I'm not uh, not able to ship unified plan or experiencing difficulties. Let's put it that way. Is that accurate? There are some difficulties, yes, specifically around um, SSRC handling, right? That we are well. Um, trying to work around it as, as we speak but again right the ultimate plan is to move to a uh, mid rid based uh, uh, multiplexing architecture right and this is i guess the general guidance as well uh, but um, again right this uh, transition period needs to be uh, set up properly so that folks who do want to use unified plan right instead of plan b can do that while preserving uh, um, SSRC multiplexing functionality that they used to used to have in their SFUs. We did uh, put out a draft of uh, one uh, proposal for adding SSRC information, and but uh, that seemed to well, it didn't get that many that many uh, comments saying that yes, this would solve a problem, so this would. Uh, uh, this would be worth implementing. It was more, uh, more or less. Uh, let I think this was uh, as hard as uh, in, as uh, supporting grids. So it kind of died. Are you thinking that we should revive uh, SSRC signaling? Uh, so, sorry, I, I didn't. I missed your last uh, sentence. Can you repeat, please? Do you think we should revive that draft? Uh, is it worth it? There was a draft that I put out on SSRC signaling, Max. I think I showed it to you. Howard's question is, should they reconsider implementing that? Yes, yes, I believe so. Say so loudly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I am loudly adding a plus one on this. <laughs> So that, that's it from my side, folks. Uh, anyone else from the developer community who wants to uh, speak up? Okay, I think we're uh, done for the day. And thank everybody. Thanks everybody. 
Uh, and by the way, anyone who's spoken, you can go ahead and add to the slides, add your comments in there so we're clear on your feedback. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you everyone, for having our feedback. Take care. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. 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 Uh, where do we meet for tonight then? Where? Where? So I would suggest that we take a time and meet at the hotel reception. Yeah. And some one of us, I'm looking at Floyd, but uh, <laughs> we don't know, should uh, figure out figure out the plan. Depending when we were supposed to meet, when we were supposed to meet, I was thinking of taking a nap, not planning. Yeah. Dinner.